So now I'm going to talk to you about debris flow and hyperconcentrated flow and what they are. Um, there is a lot of literature in Japanese about this. Uh, I think Japanese research is some of the top in the world when it comes to debris flow, so you have plenty you can read from that. I invite you to do so if you're interested. And what are the objectives? So, I want you to understand the different type of debris flow, know how to differentiate them, and have a basic understanding of how they work. So, first, you have to remember that a debris flow event, if it's a small event which is maybe that thick only, um, that debris flow can carry blocks, huge blocks, the size um, of a small car. So you can see here, we are back at Mount Unzen, uh, we have a few examples, where you can see a rock which is several meters in size, that has been transported by the debris flow that was much smaller. And when you look at it, it looks like a mixture, at least the deposit when it stops, you can see a mixture of rocks and small sediments all together. So a debris flow is a mixture of debris and water that flow rapidly on and from alpine slopes or on and from volcanic slopes, in which case it's called the Laha. So, どうせ気流の名前をつけるためにまあその土砂濃度がとても大事ですよね。で土砂濃度が水の分量と土砂の分量の割合ですね。で土砂濃度が何々が以上になるとそれ土石流というですね。で何々以上と後で次のスライドで説明するんですよね。でそれ何々が以下になると英語ではハイパーコンセントレーティッドフローになるんですけれども。日本語の場合は、石が少ない場合は、土砂流というのものになります。で石が多いと、土石流という、まあ、あ日本語の漢字で見たらもうすぐ分かると思いますけど、まあ、それはちょっとなんか、区別が英語と日本語が違うんですけれども、土砂の方が何がより大事ですよね。だから、英語の区別と日本語の区別はちょっと違うと覚えた方がいいと思います。で今回は英語とか英語の論文で見つかる違いの話をします。So we have a lot of different words, a lot of different terms, and、um, they all define the flow, not the deposit. So when we have a debris flow, this is the flow. And when we have a deposit, we call it a debris flow deposit. So, we separate first debris flow based on their origin. Do they come from the mountain or do they come from the volcano? And when you are under the sea, we call them also debris flow. So, for volcanoes, we call them laha. And then, once we have that difference, we make difference based on the sediment concentration. So, here I call HF or DF, HF or DF. So, hyperconcentrated flow and debris flow can occur both on、uh, volcanoes and both on,、um, in the mountain. So, you can have a debris flow with hyperconcentrated flow phase or debris flow phase, and you can have laha with hyperconcentrated flow phase and debris flow phase. So, in the English, the word is a little bit of 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 a まあ、ただ火山の場合はラハーの言葉も使えるでその同石流の中に実は同石流と同社流の区別をもするその流れてるものは同石流だけど同石流の中にこの同石流と同社流の部分があるでその区別の場合はそれなんかもう石がないとかあるとか水が多いとか少ないの場合はねでラハの中にラハの片方を使っても、実はラハの中に同石流と同社流の区別もつく。だから同じ言葉を使っても、実は別の意味のもあるから、それはちょっと分かりにくいのところもあると思います。でもちろん、もっと細かく見ると、実は火山における同社流は、たまにまた別の言葉を使って、ね、またインドネシア語の言葉ですよね。で、バンジーラというものですね
でバンジールの場合は、まあ、同石類の最後に流れるのものっていう水が多いの,の場合でも使えるんですよね。So when you are, when you are on a volcano, a laha are the generic term, and from that generic term we make differences between debris flow and hyperconcentrated flow, and hyperconcentrated flows are also sometimes called banjir. And mud flow, then you have then mud flow, which are different type, uh, which are linked to the percentage of matrix. So the fine sediments, when you have a lot of them, well, that's when we call them mud flow. The English language is the same as the word 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 is で、細かい堆積物が必要、その時。So what about the sediment concentration? And how do we、um, term that? So for debris flow, when your concentration in sediment, which is CS here, is above 80% of the mass, it's a debris flow, or 60% of the volume, it's also a debris flow. だから、動車濃度の測り方は2つのやり方があるんですね。で、重さで考えると、ボリュームで考えるですよね。で、重さで考えると 80% 以上の重さが、石とか堆積物の場合は、それは同質的流というのもの。で、それ以下の場合は、ハイパーコンセントレイティッドフローに入る。ただ、ハイパーコンセントレイティッドフローは水だけになると、ハイパーコンセントレイティッドフローじゃないで、ニュートニアンフローというのもの、その場合はね。だから、ハイパーコンセントレイティッドフローが 40%80% の重さ。で、ボリュームで考えたら 20% と 60% の間。で、mud flow の場合は、um, hyperconcentrated flow と近いんですけど、clay というの大きさ、粘土ですね。粘土の大きさの堆積物が 6%、からまた mud flow というものですね。So, what is the recipe for good debris flow? First, You need a relief with a steep slope, preferably about 30 35 degrees, which is the angle of repose of sandy material. You also need some loose material,、um, freshly deposited from a landslide or a rockfall or a volcanic eruption. You also need to bring enough water to get all the soup starting,、um, so that can be intense and long rainfall,、um, that can be snow melt. Or that can be the outburst of a lake, for instance. Let's say you have a volcano and a lake at the top. If that lake breaks on the side or on any other side, then that can trigger a debris flow. And if you are lucky, your debris flow starts at ring or just after an eruption. And, and that's when you have actually a continuous influx、um, of volcanic material. And in that case, you have a lot of、uh, debris flow. And that's why actually a lot of researchers like myself work on volcano because the volcano creates all that material and that material is ready to be remobilized. So, the whole thing is that 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 山の方だけで見るとまあ難しいですよね。一回同石類が起きたら、まあ、そこの堆積物がなくなるんですよね。山にある堆積物。だから次、あそこに全く同じ場所に起きる可能性が少ないんですね。そうすると、また研究するのは難しい。